In the world of espresso, there are very few things that a majority of baristas agree is a necessity. But one of those things I thought we could agree on was tamping. But it became evident after a video short with maybe a slightly triggering title racked up 11 million views. That just like pretty much everything else these days, tamping and its value is still debatable. And what a tamp actually is has a variety of opinions, so I thought this may be worth revisiting. In general, I think, and think being the key word here as this is my personal definition, but tamping is the process of using a tool to apply pressure to your espresso grinds, creating a denser puck, which results in more water resistance and ideally an even controlled flow of water from top to bottom. But how it's tamped, the tool used, how much pressure is applied, and if any of this even matters at all, is still up for debate. And this led me to toying around with a few different methods, including what I assume was what some people pictured with a title like No Tamp Espresso. If I could use three words to describe the outcome of not tamping an espresso shot, I would say it's a mess, both inside and outside of the cup. I tried this with a variety of grind sizes, overdosing, underdosing, and even utilizing proper puck preparation with even distribution and WDT still resulted in sloppy channeled shots. The extractions came out very thin and watery, and they tasted overly sour, hinting towards obvious under extraction. From there, I went to tamping softly, which in this case was just applying the weight of the tamper to the coffee bed. It did make a surprisingly significant difference in the bottomless extraction, not nearly as messy, but still channeled, weak, and under extracted. As you'd expect, grinding finer does slow down the flow but in my experience it didn't result in better tasting shots, and in some cases it even increased the channeling. If it isn't obvious when it comes to tamping the traditional way, there's a lot of nuance and room to play with pressures, but for the sake of consistency I'll always recommend changing grind size before messing around with your tamp pressure. The use of a leveling tool in place of a tamper is where the heart of the debate lies in that popular short video, as some consider it one and the same with tamping, but others don't which is essentially just something left up to you. But it does apply pressure, which arguably is the main component of a tamp. And much like the use of a traditional tamper, the results of using a leveling tool will vary based on the depth adjustment, which more or less equates to tamp pressure. From a low depth, which is similar to a light tamp, to a deep one, which is very close to a full 30 pound traditional tamp. And respectively, the cups vary from messy, sour, and under extracted, to clean, well extracted, and full bodied. But I do think it's worth mentioning that the pressure applied from a distribution tool isn't always even, as I did notice that many of the extractions had a clear outline of the tool shape in the early phases of the shot flow. Even though the shots ran cleanly, this is also a form of channeling. So much like using a tamper, using a leveling tool in a similar way can result in a wide variety of outcomes but in the end, it seems like whatever tool you use, a deeper press often results in a better quality espresso. Now, if you sit down and think about the reasons why some of these techniques or styles of tamping or not tamping at all don't work across the board, consider the process of tamping and what it actually does. Simply put, we all understand that it's compacting the grinds, but that one press actually results in multiple benefits. For starters, by creating a denser puck of coffee, it increases its resistance to water pressure over time, but it also creates a surface that will briefly and slightly resist water. This layer is only possible when the espresso is tamped, as it creates a negative space above the coffee for water to fill and then proceed, ideally, evenly through the bed of coffee. And as long as all the variables prior to your tamp are in line, this should produce a clean, channel-free extraction that in the cup will provide a dense, full-bodied shot of espresso. In my experience, grinding finer alone won't get you there. It only increases the likelihood of choking your flow, clogging your basket, and an increased inconsistency shot to shot. On the other side, consider what happens to an untamped or even overfilled basket. Without that headspace on top, it's risking not only an uneven compression from the shower screen above, but also an uneven application of water, as the coffee touching the screen will immediately allow water to pass through uncontrolled, which will result in channels that bypass extracting all the coffee in the basket. In the end, there's always going to be outliers with experiments like this, because the constraints are pretty small, 
Of course, I did all these tests on my own, but I did them with my machine, my coffee, and my grinder. So I can't equate the results to every machine, every coffee, and every grinder. But I can say that the benefits of applying pressure to your coffee puck, whether it be a straight down traditional tamp, or spinning an edged or angled tool like the OCD, seem pretty straightforward and more or less essential to a well-extracted shot. And I'm basing this not only in terms of flavor, but also in terms of testing the actual extraction percentages of the methods tested earlier. Anyway, that's all the tamp talk I have for now, so I'm passing the conversation on to you. What do you think of tamping? Is it just as simple as applying some pressure to the coffee, or do you think there's more to it in terms of the tool or the technique? And of course, if you've done any of these experiments yourself at work or at home, I'd be curious to know the outcomes of them, especially if you're doing no tamp espresso with any sort of success, because I couldn't get there. And I'm curious to know if people are actually getting good shots somewhere in the world with no tamp at all, adding no pressure to their program. So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have for me or your fellow coffee lovers in the comment section down below. And I'll see y'all next week. Thank you to my March Patreons, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horace, and Rose, Squeegee, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Tony, Matt, Jason, Cameron, Robert, Underdunk, Jeffrey, Jeff Roth, Mike B, Brian M, Tyler M, Jose M, BJK Cafe, JRC, Absolute, Stephen G, Home Barista Coach, Keefe, John K, Gumby, Alexis M, Barista Michael, Arthur, Techcom Advisors, Ed T, Happy Camper, Keith M, Gary M, Devo H, Ben K, Rami C, Monster 04, Bruce P, Lilac Y, Brooks, Henry, and Sam, and of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.